But now it's time to welcome, directly based in DigiConnect in Luxembourg, the participation of our uh, next participant, Philippe Guelen, Project Officer of the Creativity Unit of DigiConnect. Uh, welcome on board uh, this morning, Philippe. Thank you for Thanks. joining us. Um, uh, our program that, as I said in the in the in Catalan and then in Spanish, uh, according to the program, is basically to have have you directly information presenting three, four of the challenges uh, of the topics around Horizon 2020 that is touching re really the creativity, the creators' in uh, innovation and research for the um, putting together with culture as a, as a goal. And exactly as in our program is said, ICT 21, ICT 36, and ICT um, 19, they are mm, uh, going around really like support technology transfer to creative industries, to boost synergies between artists, creative people, and technologies, and media and content conversions. And of course, the one that uh, Rocio was um, so nice to keep it aside because she was uh, already going through the, um, through the topics from the challenge six about uh, virtual museums. So welcome on board. Uh, the floor is yours. We have your presentation right now. I give time to the technician to put it. Yes. And, yeah, and now it's go Can ahead. Can you see it? Yeah, absolutely. That, I, that's why I was giving, giving time to put the presentation on the screen. Go ahead, Philippe. Welcome. The floor is yours. Yeah, I, I just would like to get a few... Uh, a few hints on uh, either I go fast on all the, the different topics or I focus on the first few, uh, depending on how the audience is receptive and how they prefer uh, this to be handled. So do you prefer, so up, up to you, what do you I, think? I would say, I would ask the audience, but I would say that if you can give a kind of a taste of each one of those, in over like, usually I like to do that, it's like throwing away um, the fishing tackle in order to get something in return, like being sexy. Oh, I have something here for me. So it's not about going deeper, it's more like being um, catchy. So I would go for the, a little bit of a briefing of the four of them, but uh, what do you think? You want to, your specific four, one, I, I would say that it's a mixed crowd, and probably you're interested to hear about the four that we propose, because actually we are, we are in the program. I'm, I'm really thankful for all our partners. We nail it. We we have the four the four topics that are really really interested for for you. So I would I would go for that. It's okay for you, okay. Philip. So I give a glimpse on everything, and I focus on 21, 36, and 19. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So that's basically the things I sorted them actually according to the deadlines. I am trying to put my myself in your shoes, trying to. For you to try to to submit your proposals and therefore you act upon the lines usually and, and and money as well so that's the most for, most lucky things being trying to be practical so ICT 21 and 36 are going to be having the deadlines in the 12th of April so that's going to be soon and uh, the ICT 19 is actually deadlines is only on the 8th of November so if we do not have time right now to focus on this one, we will have more time to present it. Or at least you will have more time to, to seek for information. The other two that I wanted to give a quick hint on, which are actually the ESIM instrument and the FTI. Uh, actually, I have a typo there. It's a fast track talk for innovation and not open disruptive innovation course. These are actually continuous course. And they have cut off date, but they have several of them. So basically, as soon as you are ready, you can go and focus on it. And then within a month or two, you should have a deadline to be able to submit it. Okay? Um, that's basically what you should uh, be aware of. So if I go for the first topic, which is this one. Um, support technology transfer to the creative industries. This is basically the repetition of what call we have done in 2015, which was at that time the call ICT-18. And this was basically so well received that we wanted to repeat the experience. It's a little bit atypical call, and you will understand why. Basically, what we try to focus on, to target on, is the, the creative industries and mostly SMEs. SME, as they are representing 85% of, of, of the area, 
we wanted really to push them and we wanted to to foster the technological transfer between the uh, academic world or the research centers toward the real creative industries SMEs. That's basically was the idea. And the best way we found to do that is actually to get as short a description as possible. So we even managed to shorten it to one single sentence, which is, what are we expecting? These are actions should support creative industries SME in leveraging emerging ICT technology for the development of innovative product, tools, applications, and services with high commercial potential. Point. And that's what was making it well received, basically, in the sense that well, everybody could participate, not really, but actually from uh, ICT intensive transfer towards the creative industry. The other th things that uh, we wanted to insist in the, the text, so if you go to the text, you will see some differences from, from the previous one, but it's actually uh, the driving roles in the action. So we wanted the SME to be really the leader into that. So we did not want the academics to ask the, the, their startups to be participating in one of their research development. We wanted the, really to be driven by the needs of the SME. Okay? And we wanted it to be real and, and factual, so we wanted to have a, at least a draft business plan to be provided uh, in, a, in order for the people to know exactly what they wanted to solve. Okay, and then we wanted them to be clear about what were the impact they wanted to, uh, to, to have, either at European or international level. International meaning basically worldwide. Because what is interesting in this digital area is that as soon as you have a good or even simple an apps in, uh, uh, to be developed a website, you can really target the whole uh, world. But we wanted you to, to well, we wanted the proposers to be at least uh, aware of what they are playing with and what they are targeting, if they are, get, are targeting the international markets, the European market, or go beyond. And how they will measure it. Okay? That is actually the, the simple core. And we try to, to adapt to your needs, the needs of the SME, so we wanted the product duration to be very short. 12 to 18 months, and the funding basically as a consequence is basically half a million to up to one million. It doesn't make sense to, to ask for a project of 5, 000, uh, f 5 million if you run for only 12 months. In the sense at the time you warm up, you're already at the end of the project. So we want a fast and precise actions. The total budget is that we have allocated to this action is 14 million. And it has been open, and the deadline is actually going to be the 12th of April. These are typical actions, uh, in the sense that you anyhow need three partners from three different countries in order to be able to participate. Okay? Uh, if, if you are interested in this call, basically what I'm trying to do is to give you a glance, and then if you want to get further uh, information, um, the best way, either you, you, you send email, you follow the, the Twitter accounts. There is examples of the previous one, which can give you hints on what have been selected. And you have, and happily, the, the HTTP links is it's very boring to, to subscribe, but I'm sure that you could liaise with, with the people on, on, uh, in Barcelona in order to get the right links or, or description of what has been selected from the previous code. We expect to have basically the same portfolio. I would like here to stop and maybe to open it, the floor to the question. This is the very small one, easy to understand, but you might have one or two key questions today, or you want me to, to continue. Um, what do you think? Uh, you have questions so far? Yes, we have a question in the floor. Yeah, the microphone is arriving. Yeah, thank you, Maria. This is just for um, uh, SME, or also for institutions. So it's basically targeting SME in the sense that we want SME as participant in the consortium. Okay, it's not what 
is called an SME instrument. We want them to be part of it. We do not uh, specifically indicate how they have to be incorporated in the consortium. Okay? We want them to be in the driving role in the action because we wanted you guys, when you will uh, try to submit the proposal, depending on the, lay, the structure of the SMEs you are confronted with, to be inside the consortium or not inside the consortium. We let it open to your uh, definition, but we want them to have the driving role. Any more questions? So far? Go ahead, Philippe. Okay. So that was the first one. That was the easy one. And of course, now, the most tricky one. Um, it's called ICT 36. It's basically uh, hidden in the end of the work program. It do not draw a lot of attention because the budget are pretty small, but it has very interesting specificities. The line same. It's really to boost energy between the artists, the creative people, and the technologists. While in the previous call we were trying to make the synchronization between the research centers and the SMEs. Here we grow one level below, being the granularity, being really at the people. Okay? Why? It's basically because we have realized that uh, including the artists of the creative people, I prefer the term creative people because it's broader, but you will see the distinction into the core, uh, to really be incorporated in the development of novel tools is is really key for, for the SMEs or for the, for the it's not only SME here, uh, but the industry to really develop novel and adapted uh, tools. Okay, so we have launched a, a broader initiative which is called START for S and T and Art, which is science and technology and art, to basically push the transfer of this artists or creative people into the normal development cycles, R and D and I, basically. Okay, so how this uh, topic is articulated is a little bit tricky. There is two sections, the A and the B. The A is actually an innovation action. It's really to establish a structured dialogue between the creative people and the technology developers. It's basically we are seeking to develop a network for the people to establish a common practice and also to organize a competitive a competition between the creative people and the technologists to build prototype. There are really two, two people working together building a prototype and if they are successful uh, make in the competition they get money. Okay? And then we have another action, which is the B, which is a coordination and support action, which is basically encouraging the artist integration into the research and innovation projects. Okay? In this call, we want to develop a brokerage service for artists in research and innovation project, basically a, a brokering service to say, okay, I'm an artist, I'm looking to participate in the research and innovation project, or I'm part of the research and innovation project, we think that we would need artists to be participating in. Here is the list, please go ahead. So it's basically to develop that such a list. And it's also core for a start price. So basically I will explain it a little bit further, but it's, it's to uh, promote also the artistic integration. Let's try for the first one and to go a little bit deeper. Developing a network. What we want to do is basically all the relevant people in the, this area to work together to synchronize and to establish a European-wide sustainable structure dialogue between the creative VT <laughs> community and uh, the relevant SMEs to be participated in too. And promote the replication of successful initiatives across other industry and European country. If you look at this, this is a tremendous job. It's basically putting all together the people to, uh, to work together. And if you look at it and if you deduce the money, you basically have close to no money to do it. It's the real challenge. On the other side, 
is basically leveraging on all the existing structures that has been established, that has been developed at national, at regional level across Europe, and push them, we give them a little bit money for them to work together. And it's in their interest and it's in our interest as well. It's more, let's see it as an incentive. Okay, and then is to generate a competition. The competition is basically launched a, every year for the best creative product ideas. You promote the new selected ideas and show the financial support of their realization uh, up to the prototype. So basically you select people that have good ideas, couple of people, you want to have a creative person and a technologist, they have a good ideas, they basically will be given money up to 50,000 euro in order to develop their prototype and then the next year they come back with a result and you select the best one and you promote basically, you promote the best, uh, you make publicity around the best prototype that has been developed. Okay, and we are asking basically to this easy strategy to be sustainable, to try to find a scheme to make it sustainable. And better. So basically the cycle is, you launch a competition, you select the best ideas, you promote the best ideas, you make publicity out of it, but also you support the realization of a prototype, and then you promote the prototype. And if you do it every year, actually you can promote at the same time the best ideas, the new ideas of this year, and the prototype that has been developed since last year. Promotion to our different people, best ideas to the general public, and the prototype already to investors. Okay, evaluation criteria must be originality, feasibility, and economic or social value potential. So, as I said, the typical financial support per experiment around fifty thousand euro. Okay, basically what we want to do is to do the one and the sec the one which is putting all the creative uh, active actors in Europe together and the two is to promote this this competition we got three million for that and we ask at least 80 percent of the funding to be dedicated to the prototype and we, we basically push the people to already use what is existing in order to, to promote and to make the publicity, but to work together. Okay. The European uh, Enterprise Europe Network and the NCP Network for call of the publication of the, pr the promotion for the demonstrator. Okay. Do you have any question on this one? Let's call it this way, because it's, it's more tricky. See, si? we have a one, yeah. Just a quick question. Um, um, I'm not really sure I understand why this is an innovation action, not a coordination action. Could you clarify a bit the character of the, of the call? Okay, it's, it's an atypical innovation action, I fully agree. Technically speaking, um, it doesn't make that much a difference in terms of the, the financing, because we expect the financing to be, the partners to be a group of creative, cultural, uh, non-profit organization okay we do not expect to have one company running the, the show basically that would be very strange okay and second is to highlight the the importance of this prototype and market ideas basically then to, to show that we want to go fast from ideas to the prototype it's really short term thing so in one year you should be able to get prototype and to already knock at the door of the industrialist in order to do that. <laughs> that was basically the message to, to put it as an innovation action. Thank you. Okay. Short, fast, and even faster and shorter than the previous one. It, it, it really go up to the limit of what as the, the European Commission and the H2020 can go up to the funding. Okay. Now the second one, here it's, it's called for the brokerage service or the implementation of the start price. The brokerage service, as I said, is basically you try to uh, set up an online platform, which is the second point, which I basically described, to find to match partners between artists and uh, research organization, but also to fund short-term resident fellowships 
in running a H20 Turbative project or an in institution. So basically trying to sponsor the in-house residence of artists in, in running as a sciences. And uh, on the other side is also organize an annual highly visible event to, to promote this, this integration, this start initiative and the integration of artists into the science and technology world. Okay? So either there you can, if you have an idea for that, you can submit a, a proposal for that exercise. The budget is basically 4 million and what we would expect is to have this, this coordination as a production to run for 4 years. Okay? You can also uh, submit a call for a start prize, it's basically to promote it's really it's to showcase the, the vision and innovation, uh, the whole ideas, to promote it and to reward outstanding contribution. There, there would be two annual prizes, one to be uh, to honor the artistic exploration where appropriate by the art as altered blah, 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 technology. Yeah, okay, that's more. There is a parenthesis. Okay, so the idea is to. You get an artist, an existing high-tech technology, and you say, okay, try to have some fun with it, to promote some, to generate some really artistic approach of it, and, and you, you, if you get something very nice and interesting, then you could have at least a prize. The second one is basically more the work linking ICT and the art that open new path for innovation in society. It's more uh, top-down, so you have the technology, and you work with the technologists and the artists in order to to generate something uh, novel. <coughs> Two annual prize, 20k each, and that's the whole money for, to the whole CSA would be to publicize the prize, to handle the submission, to establish the evolution, and to organize the award ceremony. And the budget is basically one million for that. Okay, duration four years. So you will run the exercise for four years. That's a little bit more tricky. Um, and that's the summary for the two different types, the point A and the point B. You have any question on the point B? Si. Microphone is coming. Hi. Uh, you mentioned that there must be some highly visible annual event in point B. And uh, I wanted to ask if it is, has to be an isolated event or it can be something attached to something that is already highly visible, like a music festival. Say it again. So, so, so what we are looking for is to have as much visibility as possible and to be able to run on an on already existing one. So it's up to you to, show, to make the case that the, the targeted event is the perfect match for having the, as high visibility as possible. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Keep going. Okay. Yeah. That was the second. Then the third one. ICT 19. It's, this call is a little bit in the future, so it's going to be the 8th of November. So it's a, uh, the deadline is in the year time, so you have more time to, to swallow the text, to analyze it and the line. It's called Media and Content Convergence. And basically the challenge, uh, what we are looking for is to, to have projects that would help us to make the best use of technology for reaching out the new, to new audience, adapting to the digital area and thriving, well, it's really publicity leaflet here, and thriving to the connected digital single market. So what we are trying to, to found is projects to, uh, to transfer the, digi the digital domain in media and convergence. Okay, well, you will see a little bit more in the detail afterwards. Okay, so what type of, of funding we would do? We would uh, support the large scale demonstration, pilot, or close to market prototype, uh, which are basically exploiting the convergence ideas, the inter it's, it's an amazing word. Interoperability and integration between broadcasting, broadband, internet based services, audiovisual, and social media. So basically, as you have understood, the convergence 
is really you put all the IT uh, digital things together, you shake them, and you get a wonderful stable things that work on your phone, on your tablet, on your TV screen, and ebooks and whatever you can imagine. A smartwatch as well. Okay? That's the both concept. So there is two topics, one which is an innovation action, and the other one is a coordination and support action, which is really a basic one that you will uh, understand. On the innovation action, okay? Um, what the, we are targeting here is really to develop the immersive environment. It's, it's, it's really to the, the key words here. Okay, to, to enhance the user experience in content consumption. Um, and to increase the accessibility and the like. Please go and read everything. I'm not going to read the whole text. The text is pretty long. It's pretty well. It's, it's basically totally the reverse than the previous call where you have only one sentence. Here you have basically two pages of description, but at least it's clear to, to understand what we are really looking for. Okay. Proposal should address one, but ideally more challenges. So if you submit you, one proposal, there is, I think, four potential challenges, but you could even go further to that. You have at least to, to answer one, but you could answer two or three or four. Okay? The first one is the synergy, exploiting the synergy between the participation of individual connecting through social media and the convergent environment. So basically the focus is on the social, the link between social media and, and uh, the convergent environment, let's call it the the other domains, and from an individual point of view, okay? <coughs> Develop service around that, that, that would work on uh, aggregation, annotation, media sharing, search, and the like. The second topic is really the develop immersive and pervasive solution for personalized experience. So it's really the, the, the personalization, hyper-personalization, real-time storytelling, Free, free viewpoint, augmented reality, and the like. It's really to focus and to adapt to, to the people. Adaptation, <laughs> personalization. The second is what is also called uh, Atawa, which is any device, anywhere, anytime, in multiple platforms. So having the information centralized, but available from everywhere, in the different format that you can use. Okay, it's more uh, nitty gritty, more uh, technology and technological aspect. Okay? And the fourth one is accessibility solution. So basically having the system uh, accessible to everybody, so from uh, subtitle, sign language, descriptive language, automated translation, adaptation. So really focusing on available, not the first one was available everywhere, the, this one is available for everybody. Okay, that's the idea. So what we are looking for, it's the typical size consortium between, and, and the funding would be between two and four millions. Okay, the impact, be careful that the impact is important, the description of the impact is important because that's how you will be measured or the proposal will be measured upon. Okay, so be sure that you answer all these, ans these questions or th these points and that you defend your proposal against that, that merits. As I said, total budget here is 38 million. And the call will open the 8th of May and the deadline is the 8th of November. Questions? Any questions? Yes, go ahead, please. I have one year to answer that question. <laughs> Uh, just a quick one. What is the definition of a large-scale pilot? Definition of landscape? Large-scale uh, pilots. A uh, large-scale pilot. Yeah. Um, demonstration, I mean. Large-scale demonstration or pilot, if you want. The idea is that you have to prove that it's scalable. <laughs> That's the reason of large-scale. Uh, if you make a demo prototype or pilot prototype that work inside an enclosed environment, forget about it, it doesn't match. So you really have to go outside and, and to, to make it run and to, sh to, to showcase the feasibility 
but also the scalability of your proposal. Okay, thank you. Okay? Yes. I, I think the scalability is, is, is key. Yes. You could say, okay, I will use Amazon approach in order to make it uh, more scalable, well, depending on the, the technology that we want to implement. You really have to have something and, and explain how the pure proposal will be scalable. Thank you. I have a question for you, Philippe. Please. Um, be, uh, yes, being myself the, the representative of the media program, the sub program in, within uh, Creative Europe, um, mm -hmm. I, I've been addressed by Lucia Recalde, the, mm -hmm. the, the chief of the unit of media, and she told me in the San Sebastian Film Festival, you have to go for the media support for the artistic aspects, but you have an incredible field precisely in this ICT 19. Because we had in the past, as probably you know, the pilot project uh, call of support that was trying to develop what we are doing now with VOD and theatrical on demand and so on and so. So it's not just a question, it's just like a kind of a, a asking for your advice. You think that the ICT-19 is um, it's good to be promoted by our office in terms of immersive experience, audience engagement, and new experiences to attract people to any type of platforms, like the, the experience of theatrical on demand, or um, uh, all the innovation we have in um, video on demand. And the other question, because that's that's I know why I, may, I point out this, it's because I know that this ICT 19, as you were joking, you have one year to answer the question, but um, but. Um, um, for sure, how it's related to how it's going to be implemented, the digital single market that still they're finishing the negotiations and probably it's going to be implemented at the beginning of 2016. So it's related in how all those candidates, they're going to present the projects regarding how it's going to develop the implementation of the digital single market. So question A, how media is compatible, my field. Option B, how we have to be careful in how that's why it's in November 2016. Uh, we're gonna change our projects regarding how is gonna be the implementation of the digital single market. Okay, the first one. The first one you you highlighted a very nice trend that that we we are implementing, which is the the merging. And I like your body language because you were doing that. It's actually the the the, the merging between the research, the H2020 research and innovation landscape and uh, the European, the Europe Culture Media Programme, which are more implementation and, and supporting the, the creation of content. Okay? So it's, it's indeed, we, we are trying to merge, and it would not be a surprise that in the, in the next years, you will have calls which are really link, interlinked in between, ready right, to make the link. Here, if you can see it, indeed, you can see it as, as the first step towards the research area, the, the H and T2, which are getting closer and closer to the Creative Europe media course and program. And you will most probably see the European uh, media code to go a little bit closer to the pilot development and the like. Yes, it's really a trend that, that we try in order not to have any gaps. And uh, this, this text, basically, technically speaking, this text had been drafted uh, already close to a year ago. So it was the starting point of this, this merging. So definitely, yes, you got the, the idea right of this, this bridging exercise. And you will see it more and more. And yes, we will ask you, and we basically already ask you now to promote, to promote the H2020 course. Okay? For the second one, um, Yes, there, there will be impact, but the impact of the DSM will mostly be uh, legislative and the likes. Here, what we are talking about is more the technology development. Uh, of course, if you are an SME that, that uh, building a system, a platform that you want to, to, div to sell across Europe, you, you have to be aware of the, the future legal constraints related to it. But uh, it's honestly not tackled here too much. I mean, from a business plan, yes, you have to be aware, and yes, you have to, to develop a system and solution which will be adaptable, 
but it's not really at this level, it's not ours to be fully adapted to what will be the legislation in two years, because we don't know. Okay, thank you. You answered my question. Thank you so much. Any questions in the floor? We can keep going with, with the, the fourth one. Okay, there, there is the, the, the second one, which is the, C, yeah. uh, the CSA uh, on the ICT-19 CSA. <laughs> it's uh, basically an easy one. It's facilitate research and policy exchange and support R&D program activities. These are uh, really typical uh, coordination and support action for the conversions in social media. Okay, that's uh, for people that are used to this exercise. This this is a real typical one, and the budgets uh, uh, that you can ask for that is basically one million euro. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it because it's a really typical one. Okay, expected impact for that sustainable European forum of stakeholders representing the evolving media economy. Environment, but it's basically what is LCSA. Okay, so the budget one million, so we're already for only one and deadline day. Okay, that is the next one. Then we get, I get different. Um, I don't know how many minutes do I still have in front of me. You have like 15 minutes plus uh, all those questions that are going to generate, but so far we're going quite well. So, so I'm not going to talk about the virtual museum because uh, Mrs. Castillo has presented it before. Um, I no, get, no? No? Actually, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Rocio Castrillo uh, was going to do it, but she, she said, because in the program, uh, as far as I know, okay. was announced that you, you could make a kind of a mention, and was in the program, she, she was refrained herself. I, so okay, maybe you so can... I do, I, I do it then. And, and yeah, she please. told me if I'm correct or wrong. <laughs> All right. Hand, hand. hand, hand. It's going to be perfect. Uh, one of my colleagues was usually doing it. So the virtual museum. So that's... Uh, SC6, so it's not a 2020 lay. I'm, I'm sorry for this slang and uh, wording. It's a different topic, it's social challenges, but it's virtual museum. The concept of virtual museum, um, the real museum, and happily provide only access to the public of 20% of their assets. We think that 80% of their assets reside basically in cupboards or in the not the, the attic but in the, in the downtown mm. things. Okay, and uh, they are running on most of the problem for conservation, the usage, and uh, the reuse of of, of the uh, the assets as well. That's one of the problem. Virtual museum. The virtual museum exists. Is basically you could see it as uh, the internal portal of existing uh, museum, but it's go beyond that. It also can gather addition uh, conglomerate of of, uh, of existing museum, or can even get no real museum attached to it. Okay, is it a new concept? No, it's not a new concept. Uh, we found back this Apple uh, CD-ROM thing is getting from 60s graph uh, 92 where you could go and browse an existing museum on the thing, so the concept is not new. But uh, it it's really need to be developed. Okay, so the ideas of the virtual museum as such is not only to get a virtual existing uh, visiting virtually an existing museum, but it's been mostly to prepare the trip to the real one. So you can elaborate, you can prepare, you have a better experience while you are visiting the museum in the sense that uh, the trip has been adapted to your need and to your knowledge, and uh, the post experience as well. So basically the challenge, what we are asking for, is to further emphasize the, the access and uh, develop uh, the narrative for the collection and display adapted to your needs. Okay, so there is two sections, the A and the B, of course. 
the A is to develop the highly, innovation, the highly innovative technologies method and ICT tools, to develop the ICT tools to improve what is called the digital encounter, so, so to, to, to better match the need of the person who are going to use it and the, what can be provided to them. Okay, you can see it as a, as a personalization as well. Okay? To develop the, the narrative, the, the how do you call that again? Uh, I saw it in the previous one. The, well, what, what, the narrative, the interactivity of the people. The point B is mostly to develop the platform, sustainable <laughs> platform, to, uh, uh, to, to, to work together. That's basically a CSA, as far as I as you will see. It's to, to gather all the community around this virtual museum concept, make them working together. Okay, being public or private stakeholders. That's, that's the easy one. I'm sorry, I'm not that acquainted to the cool topic as you have, as you can notice, I'm a little bit less uneasy today. Okay? Uh, accessible, basically, it's to promote the virtual museum concept and the related things. Okay? The, the first one is a research and innovation action. That's the reason the research is important at that aspect. And it gets, we expect the typical size project, two and a half million project, typical duration, and we have 10 million allocated to that. It, the other one is the coordination and support action with a typical 1 million. I'm sure that you will have tons of questions on this one because I was not clear. And I <laughs> hope that I will be able to answer you. Go ahead and shoot. Um, do you have any questions? Don't worry, Philippe, because as I said at the beginning, we have hand-to-hand. -hand. Rocio can provide extra information yeah. if needed. Uh, any, from, uh, any questions? Yes, yes, we have it. Go ahead. Hello, just one quick question. Uh, to what extent this virtual museum idea it's, might be suitable or it's going to be suitable uh, to a particular problem that will be archaeological sites? I mean, archaeological sites, usually desirable, should be converted into a museum, but, but it, it's, I mean, does it fit properly in this core? Yes, it's, 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 uh, it's one of the chance of this virtual aspect of it. We call it museum because it's, it's the typical wording, but uh, uh, this can be applied to, to, to an archaeological site as well. Uh, that you can see as an open-air museum, basically, as you mentioned. Great, thank you. More? So, no questions, okay. Philip. So, I will spend a few minutes, I think that I, I still have, on two different things. One which is the SME core, I don't know if you have ever heard about them, I'm, I would guess it. This, this, this area is act, are actually very interesting for the small company, the SME, um, but we do not always mention them because they are, basic, they are open to everybody, it's not topic specific. Okay. The, the reasoning behind is actually to support the development of an SME and, and particularly here on SME in the ICT domain. But I, I, I want to talk about it because they are very successful tools where people can apply easily and I would expect that you have in front of you a few SME representatives or at least that they can transmit to it. So I think it, it deserves their attention. Okay? So you have in, in how it has been designed, you see me instrument, that's really the so-called instrument instrument. There are three phases. The first one, which is small grant, 50K, which actually supports you to draft a business plan. The second one, which is called the phase two, which still makes sense, is to grant from one to three millions to really develop uh, the ideas based on the business plan that you have prepared. And the first three is actually to support the commercialization. And this one has no funding. It's a very interesting one. <laughs> it just helps you, <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's useful. Okay? Uh, so, depending if you have an idea, if you want to support it or not, 
But that's really the, the, the point. So the three points, the feasibility, <coughs> the innovation, development, and the like. The key point here is that you do not have to build consortium. You can be one single SME and you can apply. That's what makes a big difference. I mean that you do not have problem in terms of confidentiality, you do not have the problem of seeking for partners outside your country and, uh, and having this, this scaling problem. Okay? The, the, the negative point is that you can get half a million or two million funding for the phase two, but you get only 70% of the cost to be covered as a generic course. Okay, it cannot only be perfect. We cannot design something perfect. It has to have a potential. No kidding. It's, it's a very interesting one. And the 70% is definitely of interest for SME that anyhow want to develop something. Okay, the phase one, I, I go very fast because I, uh, we do not have time anymore, but I really want, for the people who are in the audience, which are aware, uh, inter interested to it, then to keep on and scratch a little bit on that domain, to be, um, to, to go and, and to look. So the phase one is basically um, 50K. The duration to draft the work plan, the, the business plan is six months. And uh, the, the further interest is actually when you submit the call, we ensure that you will have an answer within three months. And you will get the money within, uh, I think it's four months or five months. So it's very short term things. You will have the figures a little bit later. For the phase two, it's a little bit the same. So you get uh, the ideas, you want to, uh, to develop the ideas, the prototyping, so we can s support prototyping, miniaturization, scaling up, design, performance verification, testing, demonstration, development of pilot lines, validation of market replication and the lines. And you can ask basically for, for the cost, the funding to be between half a million or two and a half million. And we support 70% of the, the cost. Typical duration is basically one to two years and the outcome should be a new product. Make it, make it honest, really ready for the market, to be launched on the market. Or a business innovation plan as well. Because it's not only technology development, it's also if you have a new business, uh, business strategy, business model, then you could develop it with this tool as well. Okay? The phase three is, as I said, is to support and uh, to have access to support, odds to go at international level, basically. Go and read it carefully. Uh, so we have a, a typical, so this call is open for all the SME, but we have a specific one related to the ICT, and uh, it's basically the same, the, the same folder, and we have 100 million funding dedicated to that goal. So there is money. The problem for you, well, if you want to submit, is that there is a lot of competition as well, because it's open to everybody. It's very large. But people get it, and the 100 million go away, so which means that you could apply for it and you could get the money. And it's reasonably easy to submit. It's so much easy to submit that we had to constrain a few things, is that you cannot submit more than once. That you have to wait for the answer in order to be able to submit to the next one. It's, it's the only way we, we, we could refrain a little bit the submission. Okay? Um, so, the proposal for phase one are not required to provide a draft plan for exploitation and dissemination. It makes sense because that's the idea of draft one. You get 50K in order to draft a business plan. On the China phase two has to have a business plan in order to be eligible. The other aspect is that you can submit what basically whenever you want. There is a lot of course deadlines. It's, it's not every two months, every three months you get a call. So as soon as your ideas is ready, you go and you submit. And as I said, for the phase one, it's even more than two months, that uh, three months that I said. Within two months, we give you an answer after the call, the call deadline, and within three months later, you can get your money. On the phase two, it's basically the same, every three or four months you get a deadline, and after four months, 
you get the idea that you are in or you are out. And after six months, you can start the project. Do you have any question? And actually, the answer is easy. Uh, first, you Google H2020 SME World Program 617-16, and, and the general annexes is, is of importance as well for you to be able to read. The document, be honest, I, I went through it this morning. It's about 20 pages. You read the 20 pages, and then you are convinced if it's worth investing in, in, into it or not. Any questions? No? Then we wrap it up. Um, Philippe, it's been great yes. to have you. Thanks for your time, for your clear explanation, for your sense of humor here and there, and for, as well, encouraging in this last part to even its extremely competitive field and it's uh, looking for excellence. Um, your aim is to encourage the participants to present the best uh, projects as possible. So we thank you for that. We uh, have your, um, your <coughs> details for contact for uh, extra information. can be provided for the partners that we build up this, uh, this event. And uh, thank you. you I, I can ask you if you want, you can join us, but I know you have a very hectic agenda. Yeah, no, we I, can keep I, going. I need to run away. Uh, but I, I would like to add one thing. It's a very highly competitive area. On the other side, the cultural and creative industries are very sexy to be presented, usually. When you look at competition and you see that, yes, I need to develop a Bluetooth, uh, 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 reduce version of the Bluetooth version 3.5 because it has a tremendous market. On the other side, you say, you know, with the tools I want to develop, I will make fancy uh, videos or fancy things. Usually the, the evaluators, because never forget the evaluators are, are used, uh, peers of yours, people from your area, they always have that, they are human. Yeah. And i definitely honest, even if the statistics shown for the first years that the CCIs was only participating, success rate was only... Uh, four person because the participation was only four person. Uh, I'm sure that you can go better. Excellent. Thanks for encouraging okay. us. Um, have a good day. See you very Thank soon. You. Thank you, Philippe. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Thank you.